Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of Witch Switch. Reading, understanding, and analyzing force curve graphs. It's pretty important and helpful in the community to learn about force curve graphs and how to read them. It'll help you further understand how switches work. And if you want a mechanical overview of how they work, feel free to check out episode 1 of Witch Switch where I open up switches and you can see the insides and how they interact with each other. As you learn to read force curve graphs, you'll learn to quantify why different switches feel different. It's more than just saying this switch feels snappier than that switch. This switch feels heavier than this switch. This switch feels slower than this switch. All of those feelings can be quantified numerically and force curve graphs are the best way to do that. And as you do that, you might get an idea of how a switch might feel before you even try it. And that can be shaped by your preferences as well as shape your preference, especially if you start reading the force curve graphs of the switches you already enjoy. It may help you decide on a future switch to get in the future. Hopefully this will help you make more informed purchases as well as learn more about keyboards. So let's start with the basics. In front of us is a force curve graph provided by Kiowa, the manufacturer for kale switches. This is the graph for their kale blue switch. Down at the bottom is the x-axis, which measures your travel in millimeters. On the y-axis, that measures the force in grams force. You may be wondering, why are there two lines on this graph? One line is the downstroke, which is as you are pressing the switch down, and the other is as, as, as the switch rises back up to its natural state. So looking at the switch, there's three main components. That are pointed out the pressure point which is the quote unquote tactile bump the operating point which is where the switch actuates and the reset point which is where the switch resets as you look at force curve diagrams it's really important to learn the basic facts beforehand so on the bottom we can see that this is a clicky 50 gram switch 3.8 millimeters of travel 2.1 millimeters of actuation so let's look at the 3.8 millimeters of travel on the graph 3.08 almost 4 this is where you can see the graph curves up and makes that straight horizontal line that's where we know that we'll be bottoming out 3.8 millimeters of travel means we should be ex i mean sorry 2.1 millimeters of actuation means at about 2.1 millimeters we're actuating but looks like the graph has us actuating at just before 1.9 so it's really important to compare the switches, uh, force curve diagrams versus the spec sheets that they give us. And this is really important because it'll help you compare switches you like with switches you haven't tried, it'll allow you to visualize how sharp, tactile, or smooth a switch may be, the different characteristics of a switch, and comparing an ideal versus an actual force curve graph. Now let's start by comparing two similar switches, the kale reds and the kale box reds. On the bottom, you can see that they're both linear 45 gram switches, where the main difference is the travel distance, where the KL Red uh, travels a total of 3.8 millimeters and the Box Red travels 3.6. But more is actually true than just that. While they're both rated at 45 grams, look at where they actuate, the press point. For the KL Reds, they actuate at around 50 grams, while for the Box Reds, they actually actually less than 40 grams looking about 37 38 grams so while they're both 45 gram switches they're pretty different on where they actuate and this gives you a much different typing experience between both switches someone might think oh they're both 45 gram switches with slightly different travel they're about the same right extremely not and they're bottom outs if you look at the kale red, it bottomed out at around 65 grams, while the kale box red bottoms out around 50 grams. Significantly, significantly different. One interesting thing to note between both graphs is if you look at the kale red graphs, you might be wondering why is it so jaggedy looking compared to the box reds? The more jaggedy a switch uh, line is usually means the less smooth it is. These are all variations in the force as you increase your bottom out, which means there's inconsistencies as the switch is moving, which means it won't be as smooth. So it's something to keep in mind when you're wondering what's the smoothest switch I could possibly get. Now let's look at an ideal versus an actual force curve because they can end up being very, very different things. 
On the left is the provided by Kale, the burnt orange force curve graph. And on the right is the one measured by Hata of Input Club. So you can see on the left graph by the manufacturer, the actuation point, the bump is supposed to be at around 70 grams at 0 0.6 millimeters. But if you look at the actual measured graph of a real switch that Hata got, the force for the uh, bump is at around 60 grams. It does match up with around 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 millimeters of travel. But something interesting to note is on the manufacturer graph, it's a straight line from a resting point all the way to the tactile bump, while on the actual graph, you can see there's kind of two stages of the bump as you go up. Those are things that aren't usually caught in the manufacturer's diagram. So this is important why it's really good to look at different force curve graphs before you invest in a switch. And as you can see, as you go down, there's another bump and a drop off before a rise again for the actuation and the release copies the same as the press, but slightly less. Overall, the switch is pretty smooth. Um, it's just very interesting when you can see this double bump right here versus the single one of what the manufacturer recommends. The resources I use for this video are Hata's Plotly and Novel Keys, who make some wonderful switches. Um, check these sources out. I hope this little quick overview was helpful. Uh, I can do more advanced videos if this is something that you guys like. If it is, let me know, and I'll be working on more force curve graph videos. But on all the future which switch episodes, I'll be covering different switches, how they work, as well as their force curve graphs. So you'll see more force curve graphs as this series progresses. So hopefully you can take this knowledge and look at different force curve graphs to understand what you like, what you might not like, and things you don't like. So when you get switches in the future, you can know beforehand that you'll most likely, hopefully, like a switch. Thank you for, so much for watching. Hope to see you next time.